This is part five of the five parts form bird fleet application demonstration. If you've not seen the earlier parts, there's a link in the description, as well as timestamps. In this part, Mark Hosking explores work requests and plan maintenance in Formbird Fleet. So the difference really between a repair and a, a service, it'll pull through the service requirements. So that might include images or manuals or anything else if you're attaching it to you know, the actual service. But one of the big differences then, it, it'll also bring through any parts that, that have been nominated for that service and also a checklist. So the, the mechanic then works their way through the, the checklist that's been nominated against that, 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 um, that work order. Again, you've got the questionnaires, same sort of construct. You've got the questionnaires there if you want to add extra data or collect extra data. You have the same process. So normally this would be created as part of the process. So this is me coming in and creating one out of, out of order. As I said, I can create the timesheet. I can put it in progress. I'll start the timer. I need to assign it to someone before I can start the timer, which is sensible. And there's a, there's a bunch of other requests. And the requests also, what I haven't shown you is a few things like the repair request. If I come in and do a repair request, I can also do things like nominate that, you know, if I'm actually in the field and I've, I'm, I've got access to the system. So let's say I'm a driver and I want to report an issue. I can also do things like nominate the fact that I've, um, I've, I've broken down in the field and then I can put a street address in there and, and nominate that I need a tow truck or whatever else. So you can actually start to sort of use it for the workflow of um, activity and that will then appear in the, the – you can also set up um, notifications and emails. So on a new request, make it notify or text message a group of people or an individual or what have you based on the particular request. Okay, going back, so yeah, there's a lot of workflow around notifications and SMSs and emails and stuff. So that 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 includes, you know, the fact that it's, you know, come in and come out. Now, just just diving down, just ca just quickly, I'll just have a look at the service um, profiling. So this is where we start to create and manage the service schedule. So the plan mm -hmm. maintenance. There's a couple of ways we can create service schedules. So we can do it through this, 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 this approach. We've also got a logbook creator, so you can sort of follow a logbook. And we've also um, just implementing at the moment almost like a traditional garage type creation where you say, I'm going to create the next service at the point of service. So you complete the service and you create the next service. So you can do it sort of three ways. There's, there's this, this generator, which is generating a complete sort of cyclic maintenance schedule. There's a logbook, which you look at almost non-repeating events. So you're really creating one by one, be creating a, a complete um, schedule. And then the third way is the vehicle comes in for its 10,000. I'm going to go, okay, mechanic says 20,000 Ks. And it's sort of the very primitive type, simple way. But all three are valid for various reasons and you can use all three. You don't, don't, one doesn't exclude the other. They all basically create the same service event type record they're all identical. They just sit there waiting to be triggered and to fire off and, 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 come into, and come to life. But this is our generator here. And essentially what you can do is any asset. So I've nominated an asset. I've given it a, a, a description of what this planned service is. I can do it against up to four parameters, if you like, and you can have any combination of them. So against a date, a primary meter, a secondary meter, and fuel. So typically primary meter is going to be odometer, but it could be hours, and it could be all four. You might have a very heavy vehicle where you've got, you know, cyclic three months, you've got primary meter, which is odo, and your secondary meter is hours, and fuel. So some of the very big plant we're seeing operate on all three, all four. If you, the ones that you select is then ones that you put parameters on in terms of how far out you want to be planning it. I'm going to be planning it for these dates and this consumption. And you can have a start date and end date so that if you're obviously bringing in plant that's existing, you're going to have a start base period and a, an end date period. You'll also have um, lead time. So 14 days is, is, is fairly low. A lot of our customers are like up to a month, you know, saying that this I'm expecting this to occur in a month. 
what it then does is then you basically build up your services and you can also have um, you can have a service which inherits other services. So, for instance, a C service. So this is the individual services. So basically I'm saying I want to plan this vehicle from this date to this date, from these mileage to this mileage, and these are the different services, and here are the service details. So for an individual service, I will have what's driving it, the type of service, whether it's inheriting from other services, the checklists that I'll perform, materials I need, and specific questionnaires. And I can build up basically, this is kind of like the service event. This is what I'm expecting to happen on that day to, to, to do that service. So what I'm essentially doing is I'm, I've got, I'm building up the profile of this vehicle and its planned maintenance out for um, whatever period. So each of these are cyclic. So once I then say, um, and I'll, I'll hide this one column here, once I say kind of build, um, what it'll do is build up the program. And so it'll build the date, time, date, time. It'll build the, the odometer. Um, it'll, it'll sort them in the order that you've decided to sort on, typically date, but it could be odometer. Um, they normally will obviously align. And what will happen is that you'll see that it'll go through the sequence. So it's going um, A service, B service, A service, C service, A service, B service, D service. So that's running through that sort of, the cycle you'll typically see in a, you know, in, in a lot of assets. Once that's built up and you've committed it, it'll then actually build up the uh, the scheduled the scheduling records and the scheduling docs. So these are the service documents, and these are the documents that's kind of sit there waiting to be called on and to turn into a work order. So if you want to reprogram it, you can reprogram it, and essentially it, it doesn't cancel. Obviously, it doesn't cancel out ones that. Um, haven't have been activated but anything that's kind of in the future what have you so you can reprogram it so you might say oh look i really need to i'm not you know i want to bring it forward the services i want to extend it out or whatever you know just if you're readjusting it you can readjust it and it'll, it'll readjust it so this is generating it from a logbooks perspective which is slightly different as i said it's it's really some of the logbooks you don't really have that cyclic. Some, some of the approaches and the manufacturers have done it that do. It's kind of, so we, we're trying to cover all bases in terms of ease of creating a planned maintenance program. It's uh, continually growing in terms of how we improve it and, and make it nicer and, you know. It's... Thank you for watching. To view the next part of the Formbird fleet demonstration, click on the video. If you missed the first part, there's a link in the description. And please contact us via our website if you would like a personal demonstration.